I, after a week of really strong winds, it's finally died down and in fact this is the second day now of blue skies, which is very nice. It's the end of February 2022. It's still windy, but that's because I'm on the coast and the, the very cold wind is coming in from that side. But we're down at Minsmere and looking for Dartford warblers. And looking is all I've done so far. I've seen them, very fleeting glances of them, and, and that's that's all you normally see with Dartford warbler. They come up on top of the gorse bushes, but just for like two seconds at a time, and they jump back down again. And very noticeable because they've got a long tail. So when you see one, even just for a couple of seconds, you, you know it's a Dartford warbler. But I thought in February I'd stand a very good chance of seeing them singing. And that's how you get to photograph Dartford Warbler. If they just pop up for two seconds and down again, your chances of getting the pictures, well, it's pretty difficult to do. But when they come up on a bit of gorse and sing, just make a note of that particular sprig of gorse they were, they were on, and then go and stand there and just set your camera up and just stand still. Don't talk, don't move about, just stay focused on that bit of gorse because they will have their favourite song posts. I have a, a circuit of them, I keep going round and they pop up and sing from each one. But once you've identified one, just stay with it. And there's a very good chance in the next 30 minutes, the next hour, they're going to pop up there and sing again. They don't sing very long, but at least you're on the right sprig of gorse at that time, you stand a chance. That's the theory. The practice today not working because they're not singing. This is the end of the second day. Both days have just been spent uh, looking for Dartford warblers. I went back to Minsmere first thing this morning. It was a lot windier than yesterday and because you're on the coast you're even more exposed so I suspected the wind was stronger there and would be weaker inland. I didn't even see a Dartford warbler this morning. So about 10 o'clock I left and I've come to the heath round, heathlands around Minsmere. There's a lot of them and Dartford warbler are, are very common. I've seen them many times during the course of today and I've got a few grab shots but nothing very special. It's always worse in the wind. They are a bird that hops onto a branch two seconds and they hop down again. But when it's windy, well, they spend less time up in the air, they skulk. But also, when they do land on the top of a bit of a gorse or heather or whatever, they don't look very settled. The wind is blowing them about. So it's now quarter past four. The wind has died down in the last half hour or so. But it's time for me to start thinking about going home. It's three hours to get home. And uh, not a great deal to show for it. I'll show you the only three pictures I kept of Dartford Warbler taken from this two day trip. This was the favourite. I like the perch it's on, I like the background, it's nice and soft and diffused and the fact the colour sort of matches the bird too. But he wasn't there very long and he kept being blown about by the wind so his tail's gone out of position here and then his wings came up. Shutter speed one thousandth of a second, lens wide open but with a 1.4 extender on, handheld. I don't do a lot of handheld photography, I've normally got a tripod, but because it was so windy I gave up on the idea of trying to do video. So I thought if I'm just doing stills photography then I can handhold it and I'll be more mobile and be able to cover more ground. This robin was much easier to photograph because he was down lower, he was out of the wind and more sheltered so he was there for a long time. The camera was a Sony A1, the 200-600mm zoom. And as ever I do with this Sony camera, I have problems with the dial. I managed to change this left hand dial to single shot instead of high frame rate. And also I managed to change the compensation dial so I was one stop over without intending to. Never used to make these mistakes with my Canon cameras. The dials and buttons were, were so slick on the Canon gear. And I didn't really appreciate how well designed Canon cameras were until I sold them because my Olympus and my Sony are nowhere near as slick and well designed. As it wasn't a very successful trip, I'll show you some Dartford Warbler pictures I've taken on previous years. Notice that in most of the pictures, the birds are singing. The bill is slightly open. 
because I've always just found this the most successful way of photographing them. They're quite tolerant of people, they're on a heathland where people are walking about on a regular basis. So as long as you stand still, they'll come back to that song post and sing again. The bill's open there, only slightly, and a bit wider. One thing to be careful of though, a friend of mine was doing this on the Dorset Heath and he'd been standing still for 30 minutes or so and when he moved his feet, an adder struck him. While he was standing still, an adder had come out and started to sunbathe just behind his feet and he hadn't noticed and he moved and the adder struck. Fortunately he got baggy trousers on so it only struck his trousers and didn't penetrate to the skin. It shook him up a bit though. Now once I decide that I'm going to go on foot and not carry a tripod with me, I really want to put a strap onto the lens so I can just hook it over my shoulder. I don't have a strap on a lot and the important thing is it has to be a quick release strap. The straps that come with the lenses and with the cameras, they take forever to put on. There's anchor points both on the camera and the lens here but you've got to thread the strap through, it takes far too long. So over the years I've had various quick release devices but I'm going to show you the one I'm using currently. It's by Peak Design and I'll put the web address under the description of the video. And um, so there are anchor points here on, on the lens itself. You don't want to put the strap onto the camera because that would put far too much strain on the mount. So it goes onto the, the camera and it comes in two parts. So there's this red part here which I'll take off this strap. This shouldn't be on the strap, I'll just put it here so I don't lose it. So we've got this little tiny bit which goes on to the anchor point of the lens and then the strap just clips onto it. So I'll put that somewhere safe. So now all we have to do is put the strap into there and press and pull and that's it. It's locked on very quick we do the other side, click and pull and our strap is on and it comes off just as quickly. The only time you might have a problem is in very cold weather when your fingers are numb but we haven't had that conditions in the UK since I've been using these which has been a couple of years we're just not getting those cold winters anymore but I just have to press down and it pulls out just as quickly. Putting the little red disc on is very simple it's got a very short cord which you thread through the anchor point on the lens or the camera and then push the disc through the loop and that's it and that stays on the camera you don't take that off you just leave it there so that's it one of the reasons I don't want to strap on permanently is they get in the way first of all when the strap's hanging down like that it's going to cause extra vibration problems and I have a lot of vibration problems with using a big telephoto lens when shooting video. Not so much with stills photography, it's the video. Sometimes I'm taking the lens hood off because that gives less surface area for the wind to hit and cause that vibration. And we've got this small rig device on here supporting the front of the lens as well. And the strap will just add to that problem as it swings about in the wind. But also in a hide, it's a nuisance hanging down. And especially when you're using a car as a mobile hide and you're doing car window photography because the strap it keeps sna snagging on your gear stick or your handbrake if you still have a car with a handbrake and it just really irritates me so I want a method of taking that strap on and off very quickly. Thanks for watching.